Nye, the science guy. Property of matter. T minus seven seconds. Are you tired of paying high gas prices? Yes. Today's dependency on oil can lead to extravagant prices, making it impossible to go the places you want to go. New research has shown, however, that there are better ways to make fuel for our cars. Would these new fuels bring lower prices? Let's take a look at what these new ways are and how they can happen. Have you heard there's a new way to fuel your car? One of the ways is by using switchgrass. Switchgrass grows very fast and it comes back each year so that you only have to plant it one year. It can grow to be 10 feet tall as well and it can be and it is very adaptable no matter where you put it. It is also very uh, efficient with the water that it receives. The yields that it can produce are great, producing 15 tons an acre of dry matter. And the good thing is it can be harvested with regular farm equipment. So, no expensive machinery is needed um, just for switchgrass. Let's convert 15 tons an acre into ethanol. We get a whopping 1,500 gallons per acre. That's pretty amazing. So you say, well, what about the stuff that's left over? Well, the benefit of that is that it can be made, uh, used to make electricity. Switchgrass is good for the soil. It puts organic matter back into the soil. It also is good to help the loss of erosion. Switchgrass is pretty much the future of biofuels and is a very beneficial crop that can help in so many ways. It has been an eye-opener to me to research it a little bit. It could help solve our problem of foreign oil and gas prices. So the next time you're at the gas station, think that we all, think that we all could pay less if switchgrass was more available as a biofuel. Barley is a bioethanol, which means it can be used from the atmosphere as a fuel source to cars. The car's main fuel source is ethanol, which is being replaced by a more efficient and more environment-friendly fuel source for cars. Bioethanol can be defined as fuel from lifeless organisms or biological organisms. The type of barley being used for fuel is Hullis barley. It has a higher starch content per acre than corn and it can fit easily into cropping for a more finished load in a shorter time. Plant breeders at Virginia Tech University released a new plant cultivar named Doyce. Doyce can help farmers because it has higher starch levels, energy that has been metabolizable, and it can be used for feed, fuel, and fuel for cars. However, it is lower in fiber than original barley. The higher starch levels make the hullest barley more conversable to ethanol. It is a good fuel source and North Carolina is demanding more barley since it does not have a lot. The farmers have an additional nitrogen and carbon if they plant the barley in the winter and let it sit until spring. one of the more promising new biofuels, cellulosic ethanol is a product that has a future in a rapid ever-changing world. It promises several advantages, making ethanol from forestry or agricultural waste that does not involve the same intensive farming as corn, which requires more water and labor. Also, in the ongoing food versus fuel debate, cellulosic ethanol advocates say that forests don't compete for land with food crops. A plant in Silverton, Georgia, for example, will be using wood cast away by loggers. Trees are hauled to a central point where their tops and branches are cut off, providing the material for a multi-step thermochemical process. Tree branches will go into a large tank where enough heat and pressure are applied to mix and turn into a gas. 
That synthetic gas is treated and then passed through a chemical catalyst that converts the gas to alcohol. And finally, the alcohol gas is converted to fuels and turned into liquid. Other companies are pursuing different routes to cellulosic ethanol. IogenCore is one of the several companies using the enzymatic process and has built a demonstration plant in Ottawa, Canada that uses specially designed enzymes to convert agricultural wastes, such as corn stalks and straw, to ethanol. Other wood wastes, even wood from natural disasters and fires could be used. Of all the wood being used, IogenCore estimates that their region has enough wood residue from tree farming and milling to create approximately 2 billion gall gallons of ethanol per year. The final way that we have for your presentation today is by using potatoes. Sweet potatoes have become a new resource scientists are looking at for the production of alternative fuels. Many believe that the continued development of the biofuel industry is the key to helping researchers at North Carolina State University achieve their goal of creating this source. This is a discovery that will have global impact. Members of the North Carolina State research team are going as far as China, the world's leading producer of sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes, a staple on hol holiday t dinner tables, are being re-engineered by NC State scientists as a source of ethanol to help the U.S. reduce its dependence on imported oil and ease the biofuel industry's troublesome reliance on corn. The sweet potato is being used not as a type we find on our dinner tables. It is still edible, but not tasteful. They are searching for a way to reduce production costs. One thought was to find a way to plant them by machinery like those who plant potatoes in the Snake River Valley. Currently, this breed of sweet potato is being planted by hand using transplants. NC scientists are confident that industrial sweet potatoes can ultimately compete with corn. As you can see, the possibilities are endless. Although there are many ways to make it, biofuels are becoming increasingly easy to make and cheaper to buy. What a finished product will look like is unknown. But what is known is... Biofuel has a future!